Hey, JNM here with new sculpting features for my add-ons JMesh and JSculpt tools, which work best with Blender 2.83. I sculpted this skull cavern, an entrance, it is just for demonstration, perhaps I will continue this asset later on. And as you might know, I like to use the mask brush in combination with the transform brushes for sculpting details and features. And the default workflow is to add a mask to paint it onto the mesh, like I do this here. Just a tiny mask, to add perhaps an indentation, a small hole to the skull. And then you have to press Ctrl and the I key to invert the mask. And after that you select the transform brush or the move brush. But then you have to go to the sculpt menu to set the pivot point of the gizmo, which is a bit tedious to do this every time you want to use this feature and I use this a lot. You have to set the pivot point to this part that is unmasked and then you can move it for example to the inside. So I added a shortcut to my add-on for this, which simplifies the process. I undo all the actions, select a different brush so that you can see what happens when I press this button Invert Transform. The mask gets inverted, the transform brush is selected and the gizmo is set to the correct location. Ok, I now can move this part to the inside to create a hole for instance. And now I use this very often. And then I think, hey, it's great that I made this button. It's a good sign when you use your own add-ons. Ok, now you can voxel remesh to get an even topology again. Ok, now the next one. Let's assume we want to add a snake to the skull. Here from the nose to the eye, something like that. And in the previous video I mentioned that we have a curve primitive in JMesh tools. You can see this when you go to primitive mode and press the P key till the curve primitive appears and now you have an input method. The default one is two points, this means you control click onto the mesh to add the first point and then again to add the second point. And then a curve is added and the start and end point are rotated perpendicular to the mesh. Ok, that's cool, but it's not optimal for something that is snapped to the mesh, like a snake or a tree or something like that. So you can choose another input method when you press the I key and this is adding points. You just click onto the mesh to add new points and then control and click to add the curve. And you can see this here, it is snapped to the mesh. The curve is in edit mode, you can press A to select all the control points, then Alt and S to scale them. And then you can move, rotate or scale the points till you're happy with the location or transform. But of course I want to use this curve later on for sculpting, so I go ahead and convert it into a mesh. This is a feature that you already know, it is this button Curve to Mesh and Fill. And it converts the curve to a mesh and fills the caps. Then a voxel remesh using JSculpt tools and enable smooth normals. And then I can switch to sculpt mode and use this mesh for sculpting. You can use the grab brush to move it around any brush you like. And I think that's a feature with that you can create meshes like this very fast. Ok, now we can go ahead and add some details to the skull, just a few cracks where the snake comes out, just for fun to make the mesh look more interesting. So this looks quite nice already, perhaps I will really turn this into a game asset that you can use in your games for free. Ok, but the next one that I want to show you is a line to axis for primitives. I also use this a lot when I create base meshes. So let's suppose we want to add some teeth here to, to the entrance. So I select snap to mesh, but deselect snap to grid. So that I can snap the primitive and I use a circle now to the mouth of the skull. So you see it is aligned to the mesh to the face that we hit, but the problem is it is extruded along the face normal, but I want to extrude it downwards along the Z axis. And this is a feature now, I can press the Z key to extrude it like that, and the same is of course possible for the X and the Y axis. 
OK, now I can press Ctrl and left click to create the base mesh. Now I can move it around using the transform brushes and I don't have to leave the sculpt mode. And that's pretty comfortable, you can create the base meshes in sculpt mode, then you can remesh and continue sculpting without having to switch the modes. Now I use some brushes to create a large tooth and for this I use the scrape, inflate and the grab brush. And once I'm happy with it, I press the mirror button of the JMesh Tools add-on to bring it to the other side as well. You can either apply the mirror modifier before you continue sculpting or you just remesh using the JSculpt Tools add-on and then the mirror modifier is applied automatically. For creating base meshes like stones, especially stylized stones, I like to use the polyline primitive. It's really great if you want to create a base mesh that is snapped to another mesh. In the latest version you can define an offset. The offset is now 0.07 and when I add this polyline base mesh and then apply the mesh by pressing Ctrl and left click, you see that we have this offset to the stone then I extrude by pressing the E key, Ctrl, left click and here is the base mesh. Very simple. Again, remesh and continue sculpting, for instance by using the scrape brush. So as you can see, creating stylized stones is easier than ever before. Ok guys, the add-on is free, will be free forever. If you have any ideas for new features, then let me know. I recommend to add these as issues to my GitHub. So guys, I hope you like this add-on and my channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you like it. Follow me on my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, support me as my patron. With that you support the development of my add-ons. Thanks a lot and see you soon on JNM.